Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be doing the CSL uh, DIY front bumper. On the internet, on eBay or any other shop that sells CSL front bumpers for the E46, they're pretty pricey. So I think we can find a way how to do a DIY version that will be much, much cheaper. So I've bought the M3 front bumper and then we're gonna be using these uh, fog light surrounds to put in that section there and then smooth it over with fiberglass and fill up, sand it down and hopefully we'll have a nice looking CSL bumper. Yeah, let's just uh, enjoy the video and get going. Guys, these are the things that you need. These I bought from eBay. They literally just sit in here somehow. We haven't actually had a look how it's gonna do it, but we'll figure that one out. And then what we're gonna do is, is use some fiberglass sheeting, possibly the tissue, just to make it a bit smoother. And then the fillers that you need, we're gonna use a um, fiberglass reinforced filler and then a smooth finishing filler there. Uh, aluminium oxide sandpaper at 80 grit, just to get all the rough um, filler down. And then we'll use uh, a wet and dry sandpaper to smooth it out. And then you're also, you just need your resin with your hardener. Uh, we'll show you how to mix all of this whilst we're doing it. This is all stuff that you can get from places like Halfords. It's relatively cheap, but I'll pull off the front bumper first. We're gonna put these in like this, um, and then fiberglass over the top of it, and put reinforced filler in, and then smooth filler on the top, sand it all down in between each coat to create a nice smooth look there. As you can see, we have cut around here just to get this to fit a bit more flush so you see there it sits a bit more flush because where this is a pattern part this is a pattern part it's not fitting correctly and the little bracket things that come with it just break and they're not very strong so literally where we've cut away at this it means this can now sit lower than this part of the bumper so that when we put fiberglass and filler on it will smooth straight into that bit there and we won't have any sort of bump if you can see that we've put a cable tie around here around this back part of the bumper here um, and then cable tied this bit to this bracket here which i think is for your fog lamps um, and this bit here to keep that nice and strong we have literally for the moment just put a piece of card in there which is behind that bracket there and now that is lovely and strong it's a good base for us to put our fiberglass on all the way across that and then filler, sand it all back and we should keep this line because that's what we're trying to do. We, we want it lower than this so then we keep that line. So now what we're gonna do is just um, scratch all this up uh, key it all so when we put the fiberglass down uh, with the resin it will it will it will stick a bit better it'll have a stronger grab to it so yeah we're just gonna sand both of these sections down rough it up and then uh, we'll stick the fiberglass on so there is a ratio mixture but I don't really know what it is <laughs> what I've always done in the past is literally don't put too much hardener in it because it will go off too quick and if you can see it there literally that that's it just get a nice dollop of it on the end of your uh, paintbrush and then just dab it on and push it down. Now you literally just leave that to dry and that will really strengthen it up a lot. Now we're just going to move on to the other side. Got all this fiberglass to try and beat down. You can see John's actually mixed in a bit too much hard enough. A bit red that in it. <laughs> These sections all sanded down now, obviously where we've uh, fiberglass and resin the back of this to make it nice and strong. We had loads of resin and everything here. So we've just sanded it all down. So then when we put the fiberglass on top of this, we're not gonna have bumps or anything. So on this stage, literally, just um, fiberglass matting this is the more thicker stuff. You can get two grades of it. So this is the thicker stuff. I can't remember what GSM it is or anything, but that is the thicker stuff. That's the more stronger stuff. 
And then as you can see, I've cut it into the shape of that. So then we can resin all of that in and then that will be your new flat part, smoothed in part of that bumper and on this side. And we should still keep that line going down, um, which is on the CSL bumpers. So we're just gonna mix up the resin now. Uh, the last time we mixed resin, we didn't actually put enough hardener in it. So it took a little while to dry. So this time we're gonna put a bit more hardener in it because it is cold. It's snowing outside. Uh, <laughs> so it is absolutely freezing. We have got a heater in here though, but it still doesn't seem to dry it quick enough. The one that John done last time, um, I said it was a bit red, so I thought, oh, you put too much hardener in it, but it actually dried better. Because this is quite a lot of fiberglass as well on the front, hopefully we've got enough from this small bottle. Again, John did say buy the bigger one, <laughs> but I thought there'd be enough. Right, as you can see, it's a bit like a, a red sort of colour. Right, so now that's done, just to show you, so you can see we've gone over, these, this, this is where the join is. So now I've put the heat gun on it. Um, as you saw, I'll just show you again. You wanna have it on the lowest setting and you wanna have it about that far away from the panel, quite far away. You don't want it too close because you don't want it drying too quickly. You basically just wanna make sure you've got heat in this to make the chemical reaction because on a normal day when it's not freezing cold, the hardener will have a chemical reaction and dry it on its own anyway. So in the summer, you'll find that that will dry in about 20, 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes completely on its own because the atmosphere is warm. But in the freezing cold and it's snowing outside, it takes a lot longer. So you just get a heat gun, just to put a bit of heat in it, you know, back and forth, don't let it, um, sit for too long in one spot because it will just heat up too quick. Just back and forth like that, get some heat in there. It will still take about 15, 20 minutes for it to be, you know, this this dry, but it's done, you know, nice. It's You can see it's all kept nice and everything else. It's all flat, it's all sticking to the actual panels and stuff like that. On this side, being as it's John's first time, he's gone a bit too close and left it a bit too long in some areas. So I just wanna point this out to you guys. The rest of it is all absolutely fine. Um, we've got a bit here, but this is so far on the outside of it anyway. All this bit's fine. But we've got some here where it looks like it's lifted. Now, we're gonna leave this side to properly dry and sand, sand it down a bit. And if that is lifting that bit there, you'll see it because it will start to have holes in it where it's not touching the back of the uh, of the panel. You know, you can cut that bit out, put it out, and then put a new piece of fiberglass there, new piece, new bit of resin, jobs are good and you know? So that's the beauty with fiberglass. It's very easy to, to sort out. The rest of it is absolutely fine. It's just this corner here. And obviously we want to make sure that this is all done properly, but we're learning at the same time. This is John's first time of doing this sort of thing, and he didn't know. So this is how you want it to look, really. So what we're gonna do, this is now dry. Um, it's taken about 20 minutes for it to dry still with the heat gun. So don't try and make it dry within five minutes. It's still gonna take 15, 20 minutes to do it properly. We're now gonna start doing the um, filler in on this side. We're gonna start off with that, which is filler, but it's got fiberglass in it for reinforcement. So it's stronger than normal filler. So we're gonna put that on there first, sand it down, and then we'll put a smoother filler on top to get a nice smooth look. So just get yourself a bit of um, cardboard or something to do the mixes on, because it will dry on there. You don't want to reuse it. You'll get dry bits in your next fresh bit of filler. So use this, throw it away, use a new bit. A lot of filler there might not look as much on the camera, but there is quite a lot of filler. And it don't really matter. Should be fine. So literally, I just need to try and get all that hardener mixed in. So literally just turn it over, push it down, 
It is difficult, especially on a bit of uh, thin cardboard. The reason why I've come out further on this is because obviously the fiberglass finished here and then you want to go further with your next layer. Each time you do a layer, you go a bit further out, a bit further out, a bit further out. Yeah, it's a bigger area, but you'll get a much better finish. Um, so I'm now going to put the heat gun on this. So on this bit here, where um, John, being his first time, uh, accidentally heated this up too quickly with the heat gun. So when this was wet, he's basically, instead of doing that sort of wave movement uh, with the, uh, the heat gun, he's held it there and when it's caused it not to stick uh, to this actual panel. So it was lifting up a bit. So he sanded it back down. This is the good thing about fiberglass it's very forgiving you just sand it back down redo it so we've sanded this down with an electric sander to get this fiberglass all off and it's all nice and flat this bit doesn't matter because as you can see it's indented in so it doesn't matter if this bit's a bit thicker with a, a new piece of fiberglass because we're filling over it anyway but this bit it is we don't want this bit too thick um, because obviously that needs to be smoothed in nice and flat to that so two pieces of fiberglass there would have been too thick. So that's why we've sanded it back off. So now what we're going to do is just going to cut out a piece here to go in here to keep this bit nice and strong. And then put the fiberglass filler over it. And John's already got sand in on this one. So that will be nice and flat. And then we'll put some finishing filler in that to get it nice and smooth. Kept the nice shape here. And then get some primer filler. Uh, wet and dry sand it and then hopefully that should be done this is now a new piece so I literally just cut a small piece like this as you can see out of the fiberglass mixed up a tiny bit of resin and then put this on and then got the heat gun waved it around and now it's all nice and dry so everything is now good on this side John's been nice and busy sanding this down by hand so as you can see he's done a nice neat job there and what we'll do is with the filler, the smooth filler, is we'll probably take a bit more sanding off here and a bit more here if uh, if John can, and then uh, <laughs> and then um, put smooth filler over it, and then we'll bring the filler down to this bit. Do you know what I mean? And over this bit here and everything, and then wet and dry, and that'll be lovely and smooth. So guys, we're gonna call it a day on the E46 uh, CSL uh, front bumper on the first part. So I'm gonna split these videos up into two parts because I don't wanna overload uh, your brain with too much information. So I'm gonna split this video up into two videos so it's a bit better for you guys to you know, ingest you know, what's going on and if you wanna do it yourself because I wanna try and leave as much detail and information in the video as possible for you guys to be able to do this yourselves at home. So if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and click that subscribe button. Make sure you stay tuned to see the second part of this video to see the finished result of the DIY CSL front bumper. It looks absolutely amazing. So make sure you tune in to see that one and I'll see you again soon. Bye.